Just to confirm that, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And the reason why I wanted to read that is for one, like I said, it starts in the spiritual, but a lot of attacks that we see on people's mind and them going through in their minds is coming from a spiritual place, right? And Eat up Mondays. Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. Listen, I know you guys are hungry. I know you've bought your appetite. And I want to say thank you to all of you guys that's been commenting and letting me know that these meals have been good for you as well, because they absolutely have been good for me. I'm not also here to serve, but I am also here to eat and take in as well. So I appreciate you guys. But without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Listen, this week, I want to talk about something that we see um, uh, happening all the time. We hear about, and that's people just going through in their mind, right? Just dealing with mental health, dealing with mental challenges, you know, and a lot of times, a lot of that stuff is brought on by, you know, uh, things happening around us, life, different challenges. Um, But one thing that we have to always remember is that, All of these things, all of these challenges to the mind, all of the different things that we go through in our mind, you know, they start in a spiritual place first. And shout out to my boy, Lenard, my boy, L. Um, We were talking about this a couple of days ago, just kind of talking about mental health and talking about it from a spiritual side, because what people don't understand, what some people don't understand is that it absolutely starts in a spiritual place. And that does not mean that the answer for it is all spiritual. That's the ultimate answer, but it doesn't mean that you should just pray and talk to God about it and don't do anything else about it. You know, not talk to anybody about what you're going through, get some counseling, sit down and talk to somebody, or, you know, you might be somebody that have to take meds for what you're going through. We're not saying that, you know, you shouldn't be doing those things or those things are bad or vice versa. But a lot of times what you'll find is when this topic comes up, you know, On both sides, you can have people being very extreme on the spiritual side and very and very extreme on the natural side. But what we do have to understand is that it absolutely starts in a spiritual place. And when and when it's all said and done, it's going to end in a spiritual place. But really quickly, just want to read the scripture to you. Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, just to confirm that it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And the reason why I wanted to read that is for one, like I said, it starts in the spiritual, but a lot of attacks that we see on people's mind and them going through in their minds is coming from a spiritual place, right? And sometimes, you know, we talk about how, you know, Um, It could be something that's physical or something that uh, a family member dealt with, but still, it's still a spiritual thing. If you've ever been healed of any sickness or anything, whether that's physical or spiritual, you know that it has come from a spiritual place. Because a lot of times when we do um, get healings or get better through medicine, if we just be honest, you know, there's other effects, right? There's effects that, you know, this medicine might take care of this one area, but then there's some type of effects in this area, right? But when it's done in a spiritual way or when it's done by God, we know that once it's done, it is done. And many of you know my testimony of how I had lost my mind and went through in my mind and how God restored my mind. And not to say that that's going to always happen for everybody, but it is absolutely a possibility. But I wanted to talk about this because I believe, you know, many people are going through in their minds because of just the times that we're living in, the different things that's happening in their lives, right? And I think it's important that we talk about this because the stuff that we're seeing now that we have all of this access to social media, all of this footage that's being uploaded to TikTok, YouTube, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, we're seeing people absolutely go sick and do things that we never thought that they would do. Uh, A couple days ago, 
I was uh, riding um, while I was working and I was pulling into a restaurant parking lot um, and the car that was in front of me, I didn't realize, I guess either they was having a back and forth with this car or either the guy was just screaming at them. I don't really know because I caught it last minute. I caught it when the, the bottle came from the guy's car coming at the car that was turning in where I was turning. And I'm like, man, what's going on here? I, I you know, obviously it's road rage. I'm like, this is crazy. So we both pull in the lot. They park, I park, we both look. This guy, he he pulls off from throwing something at them and cuts in front of another car. And I guess when he cut in front of the car, the car must have blew his horn. So he slammed on his brakes even harder, put the car in park, jumped out with his door open in in the, in the middle of an intersection in on a broad, I mean on a real busy road like the post road where I was at. It's a super busy road and just obviously. For, for whatever reason, this particular day, there's no police around when they're always up and down this road. But anyway, he hops out his car. He approaches this van. And in the times that we're living in, we got so many people out here, especially in America with guns, you know, so we don't know if the people in the van got a gun or he got a gun or either the, even the people that he threw the bottle of soda at, they might have had a gun because when we both got out of our cars, you know, it was a young lady, a young man and their daughter, like a, a real small girl. So if it would have turned into a situation where this guy would have drove in a lot and wanted to get into it more, this guy would have had to try to defend his family, his daughter or whatever have you. So it could have got really, really ugly, really fast. And I just tried to say a quick prayer that hopefully this guy gets where he's going and cools down or whatever have you. But this is the type of stuff that we're seeing. Like people are absolutely going crazy, but we have to understand that the majority of this stuff is is coming from a spiritual place, right? It's coming and, and it's affecting what's happening in the natural. And it's been like that since the beginning of the time. What God did in the spiritual, it created the natural. But I want to read another scripture to you guys. And, and, and let me be clear. The reason why I'm bringing this up and talking to you guys is because I want you guys to be encouraged. If you're going through in your mind and you're dealing with different stuff, listen, I want you to be encouraged to understand that you're not alone, right? that it's, it's not a terrible thing, but that there is help out here, right? Obviously from the Lord, you know, and, and also in the natural, right? You got people here that can pray with you and talk with you um, and lead and guide you to the right individuals to help you out. But let's read another scripture, Romans 12 and two. It says, and be not conformed to this world. That word conform here means to make the same or similar to conform one's ideals to another, to bring into harmony or agreement. So it says, listen, don't be in agreement with this world, right? Because believe it or not, and some people don't understand this, when you are in, in agreement with something that is toxic, something that is going against God, the ideas of something that is going against God, people don't understand how much that can affect your mind as well, right? Because once again, we're always the spiritual realm is always lingering around everything that we're doing. It's always, even though we can't see it, it's always around us, right? So when you are in agreement with the world's ideas and some of the sick things that we see, it can absolutely affect your mind. But listen to what it says. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. That word transform there means to change the condition, nature, or function, to convert. So the mind has to be converted. That's why the Bible talks about leaving mother and father and brother and sister. A lot of times we think of that as just happening in a physical way, but it's not only physical, it's leaving their ideologies, the way that they did things, you know, the way that they thought, you know, look at all of the bondage. Those of us that grew up, you know, when a black cat walked in front of us, it was bad luck. Somebody swept your feet, all that weird stuff. That was all bondage. That was all satanic. That had nothing to do with God. So these are the things that when we get saved, when we give our life to God, he starts to renew our mind, right? He starts to change the way we think about these things. We don't see things the way our parents saw things. And not to say that everything our parents or loved ones taught us was bad, but we don't see things that way anymore. We see things how God sees them. And if the things that they taught us doesn't line up with God's word and how God sees them, we get rid of those things, right? So we have to be very careful that we are not conforming to the world, but that we are allowing God to transform our mind, to renew our mind so that we don't find ourselves in this in this mental bondage. But listen what the scripture goes on to say. It says, but be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind that what? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And proving that is what? Living out, right? Following those scriptures and following the word of God and his lead and his perspective and how he sees things. So we have to be very careful on, you know, not conforming to this world's and its ideas. And one of the major ways that people are being conformed, being brought into agreement is how? Is because of social media content, right? Because of how, you know, how vast social media is and how easy it is to just scroll, scroll, scroll through TikTok, Facebook Reels, Instagram, like that stuff warps your mind and it messes you up. So you got to be real careful with the information that you're taking in. And we talk about that all the time, right? But listen to another scripture because this is something else that affects our mind, right? And we're not saying, you know, to, I'm, I want, I want to give you examples of things that affect your mind because I want you to be able to take a self-evaluation and say, listen, are these things that I'm partaking in? Are these things that I'm doing? Maybe this is why I'm stressing and going through. Listen to Philippians chapter four, verses six through eight. It says, be careful for nothing. That word careful there means full of anxiety or care, trouble. So it says, be troubled for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. That word supplication there means to make a humble, earnest entreaty or petition. So it says, by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And that word known there means to make plain, to make aware of. So we need to make, be plain with God. God already knows everything. He just a lot of times want, want us to come and talk to him and be honest with him because he already knows about it. But a lot of times we won't come and acknowledge him and say, God, I need help in this area, right? We keep trying to do things ourselves. And that's another thing that messes us up in the mind when we are trying to do things ourselves that we cannot fix and that we will never be able to to fix, right? But it says, make it known, be plain, to inform. It means to alert, to alert God. Listen, hey, I need help, Lord, right? But let's read on what the scripture says. It says, let your request be made known unto God and what? And the peace of God. This is what we're looking for, peace in our minds. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That word keep there means to maintain in condition or order as by care and labor. Like the Lord is going to keep our minds by care and by labor. He's going to work on our behalf. And that's why we have an advantage when we are saved. We shouldn't be walking around restless in our minds, right? That means that somewhere, somehow we're not tapping in. And that's not saying that there aren't going to be days that we feel a little down, but it shouldn't be a consistent consistent thing when the Lord is in our life, when the Holy Spirit is residing in us. Verse eight says, finally, this is very key. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, what, who, uh, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. That's very key. All of these things, but definitely the things that are of a good report. And we're going to touch on why, right? It says, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think, think on these things. That word virtue means moral excellence, goodness, or righteousness. But why does it say think? Why does it say whatever things are of a good report? Because we tend to, as human beings, when we're going through and we're dealing with stuff, we start to think of everything negative that can come out of that situation that we're dealing with. I think we've all been there. If you're old enough, we've all made those movies in our mind. Like one little thing happened. We get one little call. Uh, your, your, your account is overdrafted or this has happened with your son or your daughter has done this in school or your husband has this or something has happened at the job. And we'll sit there for a few minutes and just make that super blockbuster movie in our mind instead of thinking on what God can do in this situation to, to, to bring out the good in it. Because if we truly believe the scriptures, Romans 8 and 28, especially for those of us that are saved, it says, and we know that all things work together for the what? For the good of those that love God and those that are called according to their purpose or according to his purpose, excuse me. But what a lot of times we do is we don't follow the scriptures, right? Even though we're saved and we know what this word is saying, 
we don't think of those on those things of a good report. We start to think everything totally opposite from that. And before we know it, we're stressing, we're all messed up. And it's just, you know, we're, we're just in a bad place, right? Like, we, you know, we, we start talking like, oh, nothing ain't never going right in my life. You know, uh, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another. We just totally start thinking on other things and it causes us to speak certain things and then it causes us to act those things out. But it says that if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these types of things. And I'm just like I said, giving you a list of different things that you can do, right? Because these are some of the things when we find out people that they've given up, that they were going through in their mind, whether they've given up spiritually, just walked away from God, whether they've given up mentally and just kind of checked out on life, they're just existing, walking around existing, or maybe they've took in their lives, right? A lot of times when you find out and you dig deep into what they were going through, a lot of it, you know, a lot of it was was negative talk. A lot of it was, you know, they weren't talking to the right people. They weren't letting anybody know what was going on. Like you, when you really dig into the nitty gritty of it, you know, there's a part that they needed to play, but they allow Satan to convince them like, listen, there's no hope. You know, um, there's there's no opportunity for you. Uh, for for your situation to change. And we know that that's not true, right? Because there's a season to everything. Yes, some things may last long. We see what happened with Joseph. That was a 17-year process. Some things last long. Listen, just saying 17 years going through something, it just makes me feel like, oh my goodness, but that's just how life is. Everything is a process. You don't ever want to let life get you down to the point of where you're just ready to give up and 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 just, you know, um, just throw up your hands and say, listen, I'm done with all of it because tomorrow could have been the day that everything changed for you. But a lot of times it starts in your thinking, right? It starts with, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he, right? It starts in your thinking. That's why we have to take on the mind of Christ. That's why our mind has to be renewed because if, if it is not, we will talk just like everybody else talk. We will talk only what we see physical and not what we know spiritually. And the last thing I want to touch on that we see people, um, that causes people to go through uh, mentally is isolation, right? When people isolate themselves, and there's a scripture in Proverbs 18 and 1, when you get a chance, um, you know, look it up. I'm going uh, to try to say it off memory, but it talks about isolating yourself. And it's, and it talks about a man that isolates himself. You know, he intermeddleth, I believe, with, with all wise judgment or something like that. Like he's really going against the will of God. He's really, you know, intermeddling with wisdom. Like it's not wise to isolate yourself. And we're not talking about that motivational speech, isolating yourself, getting in a dark place and grinding, going hard, working on your body, working on your craft. That's not the isolation we're talking about. We're talking about the isolation when you are down and out, when you're depressed and all that. It is a terrible thing to isolate yourself. When you guys get a chance, look it up. Proverbs 18 and verse 1. Um, because when people get to themselves, that's when Satan really works on you. I want to read something to you. Isolation. Listen to what this says. Isolation makes a person or family vulnerable to Satan's attacks. That's what Proverbs 18 and one is saying. Isolation can cause a person to make improper decisions based on fleshly motives. And if you live long enough, you know that this is a fact, right? It says isolation from the church opens up the mind for influence from the world. Another fact, the flesh and the devil. Isolation can lead a person to depression. And I've talked about this in the past, like isolation is not good in that way. If you're isolating yourself, you're on your grind, you're working your gift, you're working your business. That's totally different. You know, you're working in the dark so that, you know, when you're all, when it's all said and done, people can see the progress that you made. You're not telling nobody that's that's not the type of isolation we're talking about. We're talking about when when you're going through in your mind, you got problems, things are hitting you left and right. And instead of talking to somebody, you know, uh, going to see somebody, uh, maybe a psychiatrist, a counselor, uh, a pastor or whoever, instead you're in your room 
and you're just processing all this stuff by yourself. You're seeing it how you want to see it. And now Satan is also there, you know, influencing your thoughts and your mind. And guess what? It's not going to be anything that he's influencing you with or speaking into your mind. Once again, it's, it's, it starts in the spiritual. It's not going to be anything encouraging. It's not going to be anything that's going to encourage you to come out of that, but it's going to cause you to dig a deeper hole for yourself. Like we said earlier in this uh in this episode of Eat of Mondays, it's not about um, you know, it's nothing wrong with taking medicine or, you know, talking to somebody, going to see a psychiatrist, a counselor, a friend, or whoever you need to talk to to get some of that stuff off your chest. That's in the Bible, right? You know, the Bible talks about that, but you have to understand where the source is coming from, where it starts from, because that's going to be the best way to attack it. It's going to be through prayer. It's going to be through fasting. It's going to be through reading the word. It's going to be acknowledging God, saying, God, please help me with this. I need help with this to come out of this, because when we try to handle it on our own or only in a natural way, it's never going to get the results that we are looking for or that we need. Remember, we're trying to get to that place of the peace of God, right? And that's only going to come through who is going to come through God. So if you've been going through your mind and as we went through this little checklist, some of those things you can look at and say, listen, that's what I've been dealing with. That's what I've been doing. Listen, ask God to help you in that. We'll be praying with you on that, that God helps you through that. But you cannot isolate yourself. You cannot just sit there and just think of everything negative that you possibly can. No, you got to think on those things, those things that are pure, lovely, honest, of good report. Because guess what? It's a renewal of the mind. Whatever you put in the mind, that's what is going to give back to you. So just remember that, man. I, I, you know, when me and L was talking about this, man, we brought up so many good points and so many things came to mind um, that I said, listen, let me share this with you guys because I know people are going through and sometimes it's not easy, but it's all about acknowledging God, right? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it talks about acknowledging God in all our ways. It says what? You know, trust in God with all thine heart. You know, lean not to thine own what? Understanding, but acknowledge God in all our ways. And he what? He will, he shall direct our paths. That's a promise. But a lot of times we lean on our own thinking and on, on our own ways of doing things. And when it get worse, what do we do? We blame God and say, oh, God, he didn't he didn't help me. He didn't care about me. But God was like, listen, you was doing things on your own. I told you, acknowledge me. I'll tell you what to do to help you in this situation. But know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together. Shalom.